So have you got ESXi version eight ready, downloaded, working? If you haven't, you're gonna have to go do that first. So you can go check out this video that we've done recently. Now we're gonna look at vCenter. The vCenter appliance version eight is available for you to download and try completely for free. And of course, if you're doing this in a business, you're gonna to wanna to go and register it. Whole heap of new features available on version eight. We're gonna show you how to download it and how to actually get it running and installed on your computer, on your server. What you're gonna need is you're gonna need an ESXi host. You're gonna need the ISO that we're gonna download, the computer, the server, and the ESXi all to be connected on the same network so you can deploy that vCenter ISO, the appliance directly onto one of your hosts. My name is Emilio, I'm a tech YouTuber. You're watching this on my channel, so why don't you click on the subscription button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. On your Google machine, you're gonna go and download vSphere version eight, which is what you can see right here. Now this is completely for free to use for an evaluation period. Now vCenter's primary use of course will be in a business, so it is not gonna be free. So you can use it for free, but then your recommendation of course will be to go and actually get a key if you wanna continue using it forever. So that's something that we're gonna recommend, but you can go and download it right from here, vSphere 8 evaluation for free. You can then log in and actually download vCenter. You'll notice that I've got an evaluation right there that expires in a number of days. So you can use it for free until that evaluation is completed. But log in, if you don't have an account, create an account, but you should already have an account if you did this previously. Under the licenses and download, you'll notice that the ESXi there is available. And then we're gonna select specifically vCenter server. Now this is the full vCenter server appliance. And as it says right here, vCenter server appliance ISO, it includes the UE, the user interface and the CLI installer for install upgrade and migration for the vCenter server appliance. And then you can actually be able to use that installation and build a virtual machine, a VM, that is actually running vCenter. And then we'll go through the next number of videos on how to actually get all of your hosts talking to each other and getting the benefits of vCenter with all of that. So go ahead and download vCenter. You now need to just open up that ISO and then we need to install the appliance. And the great thing is you don't need to upload it into a data store or within your ESXi environment. It's an appliance as long as the computer that you are using or the server that you are using where the ISO has been downloaded and installed, you just open up that appliance and you can actually point it to the ESXi host that you want to use to actually go and install your vCenter appliance itself. Now, before we do go into this, you are gonna be asked around the specs of your vCenter appliance. How much RAM, CPU, et cetera, do you wanna give your vCenter appliance? Because the more your environment is big, like the larger your environment is, the more resources you are gonna to have to give it. So what you can do is you can see here on my screen, you can go into Google, type in hardware requirements for vCenter, and you'll be presented with this website right here. Now, noting that it is version seven, but uh, version eight will be very similar and they don't have version eight. I haven't been able to find it yet anyway. But you'll see that for the environment size, for example, a tiny environment they're estimating will be 10 hosts with 100 virtual machines. So it's gonna say for vCenter, you wanna give it at least two virtual CPUs for the virtual machine and 12 gig for uh, the virtual machine of memory. So of course, this is gonna be a virtual machine. So you're applying the, uh, the, the vCenter appliance and it's gonna build a virtual machine that's gonna be sitting within an ESXi host. So whichever ESXi host you pick, you wanna make sure that you've got enough resources to be able to give it that, those specs. And of course, a little bit more than that because your vCenter is probably going to need more resources as your ESXi farm grows. And you can easily up it as you so need to as well. So that's not a problem, but it will be building a virtual machine, a VM of vCenter directly on your ESXi host. So the two things that you will need is obviously your, uh, your ESXi uh, connected to the same network as your computer or your server that you've got the installer and a cop and of course a copy of that ISO which we're now going going to go ahead and run. Now what I've got, I've got here, this is my uh, this is my Mac. So I'm doing this from a Mac. I've downloaded that ISO. Here it is, big ISO. It's almost uh, well 8.5 gig big, so it is quite big. I've double clicked on it and it's actually opened up and here it is. Now on Windows, the process is the same. Don't worry, yes, I'm doing it on a Mac, but the process will be the same on Windows. And then you're gonna to go to this area down the bottom. You've got a couple of folders, the VCSA, so vCenter Server Appliance, the CLI, which is the command line, or the UI, the user interface, the GUI, which is what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna click on this. It's gonna ask you for a Mac or Windows. If you're on Windows, you're gonna go and run the installer. 
under here, the exe file, installer.exe, but I'm doing this on a Mac, so I've got the installer right here. But once I open it up, it will look the same regardless of Mac or Windows. Few things, install a brand new vCenter server, you can upgrade, you can do a migrate, you can do a restore. We're not gonna be covering upgrade, migrate, and restore. You can go and look at those separately. We're of course focusing here on install. So we're gonna click on install. So first step, stage one, is to deploy vCenter. So installing the vCenter in two stage process. The first stage involves deploying the new vCenter server to the target ESXi host, which is what we talked about, or a computer resource in the target vCenter server. If you're happy with those terms, you go ahead and read them. And if you're satisfied, we can accept them. We're now putting the ESXi IP address. So what is the IP address of the host that you're gonna to wanna to go and deploy this appliance to and build that VM? Here it is, 172.16.1.103 is the host that I've determined is where I want vCenter to live. The HTTPS port will remain, port 443. And now the root credentials to access that ESXi host. Certificate warning, if you do have a certificate, great. If you don't, you can accept it if you're happy with that certificate and that will then connect the, connect the two together. So vCenter, this server appliance installation, is now establishing a connection with my ESXi host at 103. If you're here, great. It means that it has established a connection and everything is fine. If you've had an error message, you go back and check out what's actually happened there because it could be something to do with the network, could be something to do with the host not being configured correctly, the credentials being incorrect. But if you're here, fantastic. Now we wanna give that VM a name. What do you actually wanna call it? It's come up here with VMware vCenter Server. You may be happy with that, but I'm gonna give it actually a bit more of a meaningful name. I'm gonna give it a name that actually makes sense to me. So I'm gonna say AGU, my surname's Aguero, and then I'm gonna say vCenter, and I'm gonna say 01. So I know that that is my vCenter Server. Now this is the root password for your vCenter server. Not the root password for ESXi, the root password for your ESX, uh, for, for your vCenter environment. So you're gonna go and make this different. Make it long, make it complex. Somebody who has access into your vCenter has access to your entire environment. So make that password complex and only share it with the people who need to know about it. If you're happy with that, we click on next. So what we looked at before on that website, here it is, it's a summary. What's going on? Is your deployment size tiny? And what about the storage size? Okay, so. Mine is gonna be tiny. I mean, I'm doing this in a lab environment, but you think about if you're doing this in a production in a business, how big is this environment? How big is it gonna be? You give that spec accordingly. But as I said, you can change these later on. So if you don't get it right up front, don't worry, but you can change it later on. So I'm gonna say tiny, and then my storage size, well, the default, so you can do large or extra large, it'll just grab that storage and change it and apply it as it needs to. But again, you can change it down the track. So we're gonna leave that as default and tiny, and next, here we go. Where do we want to actually install it? We're selecting my NAS, which is where I want to stick it. But you can also use vSAN, which is more some shared storage stuff. But we're going to use our NAS, which is our primary spot where we've been building all of our VMs. And say next. Now we have a little bit more information around the setup of this particular ESXi host. So what network does it need to be a part of? And of course, this is going to be taking the network that has been created on that ESXi host. So if you've gone and created some other switches, some other port groups, then you'll go and assign that accordingly. Uh, or you can just leave it to the standard one and you can change this later on. IP version four or IP version six. I'm gonna leave it generally. What is the IP assignment? Don't, don't ever go with a dynamic or a DHCP address that changes. Uh, I recommend go static where you can. Do you wanna add a FQED and a fully qualified domain name into there? What is the full path of that vCenter server? So including the domain as well and then the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, the DNSs, all of that can all be picked up uh, and edited right in here. So go ahead and put that in. This will be the IP address of your vCenter appliance. So you can make that a meaningful IP address because that's what's gonna be used when you are essentially communicating with your vCenter appliance itself. You're gonna get a bit of a summary of what's going on. And if you're happy with that, we can click on finish. It's now gonna to start to deploy your vCenter will take a bit of time. It's gonna be creating your vCenter VM over your network and then on your ESXi host where you're deploying this, you should see a VM starting to pop up in there as it starts to build your vCenter. And we're back. And if you're seeing this right here, stage one deployment of vCenter successful, great news for you. If this has failed for whatever reason, you're gonna to need to go and maybe review some logs and figure out what's happened. Essentially, if you have got the network connection is all stable, if the IP address is a unique IP address, as long as the DNS is reachable, 
fully qualified name is correct, the domain is correct, all of that information is correct, and that the computer that you're using to deploy that vCenter appliance and the ESXi host is reachable and the relevant ports are open, generally gonna be that 443 port for the HTTPS, you should be fine. So if you haven't, go back and check it. Otherwise, we're here, proceed to stage two of the deployment process, the vCenter server setup will continue. So we can now exit if you need to, or we click on continue right in here. It's loading stage two of our install and setup of the vCenter server appliance. Here we go, we're gonna click on next. Do you wanna do things around time sync and around SSH? For now, we'll leave those turned off. Click on next. Here we got some single sign-on stuff, SSO. So you're gonna be logging in with vSphere.local. The username will be administrator, and here is the SSO password. This is different to the root password that we did previously. This is now the SSO password. So you can go and set yourself up the same or different, I recommend generally a different password around SSO. So you can put that into there. Otherwise, you can also join it to an existing SSO domain if you're already using SSO single sign-on in your network, in your environment, in a business, for example. In our case, we're gonna leave it as is. So noticing that vSphere.local is gonna be the domain name, the username will be administrator, and then we set our SSO password right in here. All ready to go, we can click on next. Do you wanna join the customer experience program? You can maybe help out VMware if you want to, it's up to you. And then a summary of what's gonna happen. We can now select finish. Not be able to pause or stop the install from completing once it's started. Just be aware of that. Don't cut the power out to anything. Don't lose your network connection during this time. Stage two then commences. Stage two now complete, set up, done. Here's the IP address. We can now close. And here is how you can access that 106-443. And we can launch our vSphere client. Here we are presented with our vSphere login for vCenter. Now here we log in with the full Username, the SSO that we use, which is gonna be administrator. So administrator at vSphere.local and then our password. vCenter logged in. So now the fun begins where you have to start configuring your vCenter appliance. So the upgraded version of vCenter version eight is now running. Hey, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, click on the button on the bell, and then stay tuned for the next video where we talk about all things tech. We'll talk to you then.